What do you get when you run over the cable on your vacuum cleaner, especially in upright? An explosion! There it is. Boom! We got a cable to change. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? In this instructional lecture, hopefully, we need to fit a new cable to a Dyson, specifically a DC07. This is my aunt's. It came back to me mums and I got text messages saying it's blown up. Can you have a look at it? So I all right, I'll have a look, probably there's a motor, whatever. Then I saw, oh, then I saw that. Yeah. Mm, that's, that's safe, isn't it? What I reckon's happened here, she said there were sparks and all sorts from the bottom. When she ran this over, it sparked like crap and blew. So, today's job is to lob a new cable on it and see if it's still alive. So, we may as well do a little how-to. I have, where is it? Another cable here. This actually is a Dyson cable from some long bin scrapper machine. The first thing we're going to do is just make a little bit of room. So we'll take the wand off and we'll take the hose out, just push that little lever down and pull. Pop that up to one side. We'll also take the cyclone off because we need to get into here. We'll take the tools off as well, just so it's easier to film. Let's take the switch housing off. Take the switch housing off on a Dyson it is very simple. Just like me, you just need a T15 Torx driver. Any description because it's only there. And you just undo this screw. But it won't just pull off. If we turn it around, you will see my pointing stick there is a locking tab there and there on the other side. Now, there are possibly many ways you could do this. The way I do it is you get your screwdriver. You stick it in that bit there and you just bash it and that little bash has just popped that side out. So we do the same with the other side. There we go, it doesn't have to be forceful, just enough just to pop the clip out and the switch housing is out. We can now see the switch. Let's see if I can get it a little bit closer. There we go, so very simple is a Dyson, any Dyson, this is obviously specific to an 07, but any Dyson is literally just the two neutral wires just connect up, very simple, and then the live goes to the switch. The terminals are a little bit bent, but there we go, so there's your switch. This video will be fine for changing the switch, literally, if you need to change the switch on your Dyson, just do this bit and put it back together and go have a beer. But we need to change the cable, not just the switch. I'll bring you back out. Here we have the old cable. Now we need to rescue this cable grommet from this cable. And the easiest way to do that is just to chop the cable and pull it off. We need that part there. All the rest of that can go in the bin. Now, this next step might differ depending on the state of your new cable. If you bought an actual Dyson cable, either new or used if you're lucky, it will come with this already fitted because they've just taken it off of a scrap machine and loved it on eBay. If you're just putting a n other bit of flex on, you will need to thread said flex through here, which can be a bit tricky, especially if they've already got terminals on. Now, depending on the size of your terminals, if you're using any old rubbish that you've got lying around, they won't fit through. However, original Dyson ones will. With a little bit of faffling. There we go. It will fit through. You can, we can work out the position a bit later. I'm just going to very quickly just double check this cable isn't knackered something which I did forget to do before this video, but I would rather check now and put an even worse cable back on because that would be funny, wouldn't it? 
just the sort of thing that I would do. No, the cable is fine. So, we need, again, luckily this is still bent, which obviously goes around the cable guide. However, if it's not, simply slot the elbow in, like so, and then you're just going to have to sort of, well, not guess, but offer it up really, if I turn you again, the cable just needs to go around like that and then come back up under there. If it stops sort of before that, that's no good. Because what that bit there does is get clamped in by that part on the switch to stop the cable pulling out. So you need to make sure this is basically rooted exactly like that. Then you simply push the alive terminals onto the switch. We'll drop the switch in there, plug the neutral wires together. You should have a rubber boot. DCO4s don't have this, all DCO7s should have this rubber boot, but if you don't have it, just a little bit of insulation tape is fine. I mean, it sits out the way anyway. You probably could get away with not having anything at all, but it's always good practice. And that just tucks away up the side there, we'll pop the switch in, turn it on. Um, Becco's top tip for turning it on is it helps fit the switch. So you have to lift that up and basically until it goes over the switch itself, which it should do, a little bit fiddly, you might just need to poke the wires back into where they came from. Just make sure everything's all right, really, I suppose. And eventually it will go on and you just pull it back on itself until it snaps the two top clips into place. Check that moves. Do up the middle screw. The screwdriver's a bit rubbish. Now, I've already ground it down twice. It's new Torx driver time, I think. But that's fine for now. I do have some somewhere, just not in this toolbox, that'll do. Check it still works again. Oh, you can't see anything. There we go, check it still works again. And then, let's just check it hasn't actually blown up. And the number one quick way of checking that is just to pop the post motor filter out and basically check it hasn't been on fire. That is fine. That is a normal, she's had this about a year now. That's a very clean post motor filter. That doesn't smell too good anymore. I have to put another one of those in. But basically, if that was black and smells of death, your motor would have gone, but I don't think it has. We're plugged in, we're live. And that was our issue, just needed a cable. While we've got it, we'll just have a quick check underneath. The brush roll is spotless. Ooh, the internal hose is not torn. What's the filter like? That's spotless as well, really. We'll turn that around. I did bring a spare, just in case, but I can put that away now. Clip that back in. Let's give it a test drive. Obviously, we just need to fit the bin on. Clip the hose into place. There we go, I shall just tidy away some tools and we'll give it a quick go. Actually, before I tidy all the tools away, because I'm a massive pikey, we shall keep, I'll only do this for speed, but we'll keep the plug and we'll keep the cord grip. In fact, does the new cable have a, yes, the new cable has a cord grip fitted, so we'll keep those two, they will come in handy one day. I think that's everything. Right, back to trying it out.
Well, that works astonishingly well. So, if you ever accidentally run over your cable with a vacuum cleaner, or with a DC07 in this case, change the cable, give it a go. You can buy old cables very cheaply, you can buy new cable very cheaply. You might just need two crimps. So, I hope that helps. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you soon. Bye bye.